Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing how to analyze the docking result and also docking validation. So, if you are familiar with docking, you know that the basic procedure of docking is to identify the sites where the protein and ligand does interact and to predict the result of that interaction. So, for that, the basic steps we follow is that we download a structure from any suitable database like PDB for the protein or you can uh, design your protein with homology modeling. And the second one is to download or construct your ligand molecule based on your requirements. Then you do the docking. If you need any uh, clarification regarding the docking procedures, you can refer my other videos. But in this video, I'll be specifically mentioning the docking result analysis and how to validate your docking. So for that, We'll be using the Discovery Studio, BioViva Discovery Studio today. It's a good tool and it's very useful in molecular visualization and also for docking validation and result analysis. So here I have already completed my uh, docking here. I have completed this docking with Autodoc Vena and I have a different result. The 6LU7 is the SARS-CoV-19 uh, main protease enzyme. And they have taken it as my protein and these are uh, some of the drugs that I have constructed using Mavin Sketch and um, optimized using Avogadro. So in this video, we'll be discussing the validity of my docking result, docking analysis and various interactions, how to identify the interactions in the interaction between the protein and the ligand. So for that, in uh, Discovery Studio, I'll be first opening my protein PDBQT file. So for that, click file, open. And here, my file is currently in workspace. And this is my default folder. And macromolecule, 6LU7. But here, I can only see this conf.txt. That is, when you're opening a file in Discovery Studio, see, basically, it will be all supported formats here, the file format that is required. So you need to change that because all supported formats does not give, these are the formats given .dsv, .msv, .sd, .sdf, etc. But you can see that there is no PDBQT. So in order to open PDBQT file here, and also you know that uh, the result or docking result will be given in a PDBQT format. So in order to open the PDBQT file in uh, Discovery Studio, you need to click this icon here and drag all the way to the bottom and select all files see these are the files in this my parent folder these are the files and this 6lu7.pdbqt is my protein that i have selected and uh, i have prepared the protein by adding charges uh, missing repair repair and repairing residues everything by adding hydrogen charges everything and these are the various drugs that i have used E19 to E36. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, ligands used, and if you have any doubt regarding uh, multi ligand docking, you can refer to the other videos that I have uploaded. We can uh, dock more than a ligand at once. So now for the docking result analysis, I'll be taking this. I'll be first opening the protein output file. See, this is the protein output file here. This is my protein. And here you can see that only there is a protein group, there is nothing else. Sometimes this window may not be visible to you. If this is not visible, this is actually have a hierarchy. If this is not visible, we need to activate it. For that, you have to go to view and see here this hierarchy. If this is not clicked, then you will not have that window. So if you don't have that hierarchy window, it will be difficult to perform the various activities here. For that, we'll go to view and we'll activate it first. Hierarchy, okay. And the protein PDBQT file is now here. And now we are going to add the ligand PDBQT file. So that for I am again going to file, open. Then I'll need to put all files here. And now I'm going to open this e 19 outpdbqt Okay, E19 out dot PDBQT. So this is E19 out. You know that uh, I have performed this using Autodoc Vena, and in Autodoc Vena, I have not used the split command so that all the docking posters will be demonstrated in a single file that is E19. And these are various models 
and these are the various docking poses and among these docking poses the best pose is the first one always is the first one so we know we only need this pose and all the other poses are coming from the interaction between e19 and 6lu7 pdbqt so among all these interactions among all these different poses of the ligand inside the protein this will be the first one will be the best so i'll just select it using left click uh, with the mouse and then right click on it copy and paste it in the next hierarchy in the uh, protein hierarchy i'll de just demonstrate it once more uh, open the ligand file select the best poster that is the first one copy go to the pdbqt protein then paste it in its hierarchy okay now you can see that the protein and the ligand are in the same hierarchy here and also you can see the ligand is now here the yellow one this is the uh, this is our ligand see it's highlighted okay <laughs> now the next thing is identification of the various interactions between this protein and ligand for that um, you have to select the sometimes it may be macromolecule whatever is selected simulation receptor ligand interaction pharmacophore etc in order to identify the interactions between this ligand and protein you need to select this receptor ligand interactions this option then go to view interactions view interactions here and here you can uh, see that the receptor is already defined that is 6lu7 that's our protein now the ligand the ligand used to be defined it's undefined here for that you have to click here on our ligand and then select here so now the ligand is also well defined now we will go all the way to the bottom and then we can check this 2d diagram see these are the various interactions here you can see that this uh, yellow between histidine chain a 163 163rd amino acid that is histidine uh, and it would it, it would a it's a chain also you can see that the 6lu7 only have chain a the chain c has been deleted prior to docking then uh, these are the various interactions this is a pi sulfur interaction and uh, you can see van der waals interactions conventional hydrogen bonds the stronger one uh, then the van der waals interaction etc these are the various interactions so you can take a screenshot or you can print it and for you for publication purpose so this is how you view the interactions now and now coming to docking validation the docking validation is actually a procedure in which we calculate the closeness between our calculated structure and the actual structure that we have obtained from pdb for that i'll just demonstrate with the pdb here in pdb rcsb pdb i have downloaded the 6lu7 as my structure 6lu7 is my structure so here uh, when i go move down the, the it's the crystal structure of covid 19 main protease in complex with an inhibitor n3 so this is a practically obtained structure that means someone has done the wet lab experiment and he have taken an XRD sample, whether it's an XRD or NMR, I think it's an XRD. Yeah, it's an X-ray diffraction sample. Uh, an X-ray diffraction sample has been taken and the structure has been uploaded to the database. So this is a practically obtained sample and it should be correct because it was obtained practically. And so that uh, this time we will be verifying that two things. Number one, where is this inhibitor N3? bound in this COVID-19 main protease obtained practically. Number two, which is the site of binding for my theoretically calculated ligand? Okay, that means I will be verifying whether the theoretically calculated poster that I got is somewhat similar with the binding site of this inhibitor N3 with this COVID-19 main protease since this is a practically obtained model. You can't assure 100% similarity because the uh, structure of inhibitor N3 and my ligand may differ. Therefore, there may be some variations in the uh, active site. But we, not, we have to identify the fact that sometimes even if we get a good docking score, the theory is that 
the ligand should bind to the active site of the enzyme to produce the desired biological effect. So, we need to identify whether the ligand, that, that's our ligand, has bound to the actual active site or how close it has been binding, theoretically. So, for that, first thing I, I need to know is that I want to find out where this inhibitor entry is actually bound in this COVID-19 main protease. For that, I'll uh, download this file, the PDB format. Okay, then uh, I'll open it in Discovery Studio. I'll just uh, file, open. Uh, it's in my downloads. Yeah. I open it. This is the structure and this is the inhibitor entry. For that you need to uh, open your hierarchy go to view hierarchy okay see you can see these are water molecules the first thing we need to uh, do is to remove the water molecules for that select on this uh, water click delete on your keyboard so the water is gone that's okay now you can see that there is a protein group see this is the, the yellow one is the protein group now you can see that this portion are not selected because this is the ligand. These are the ligands and any other, see uh, if you verify that in the 6LU7 database you can see chain A is the 3C like protease and uh, there are there's a synthetic construct that's chain B all the has named chain C and uh, and this is the inhibitor. Okay so the chain C has the uh, has a synthetic construct and an inhibitor. That's why when I was doing the uh, autodoc we are docking with this ligand 6LU7 and the, um, my ligand I have deleted chain C because chain C has a synthetic construct and also the inhibitor I don't want them I just want the protein itself so here you can see that uh, in chain C there is a synthetic construct and also a protein uh, uh, or inhibitor right now here in chain C if I open it I can say that see some values here and also in the ligand group if I open it I can see the ligand see this is the ligand this one so here I'll be uh, analyzing at what position does this ligand bind with this pro uh, our protein for that I need to select this ligand then select receptor ligand interaction from there not this view interaction as we mentioned earlier just select the second one define and edit binding site select it select your ligand then from current selection go to this from current selection now you can see a red spear here and the spear is given also here you have to right click on the spear then select attributes of SBD site spear and now here you can see the x, y, z coordinates. x is minus 10.72 something, then 12.4176 y coordinate, 68.81612 etc. That's the z coordinate. Now, I am just copying this. I am copying this. And I am pasting it in, um, I am pasting it some, yeah, any file like this. I am pasting it here. Okay, now I'll give a, a save. So, next time when I'm validating my uh, practical, the, the work that I have done in my computer, I will just verify whether my ligand is somewhere closer to this uh, position. Let's see that. Here, see here, the 6LU7. It has uh, the 6LU7, the first one. This is my PDBQT prepared. This is my E19, the best output of my E19 ligand. And now here I am going to define its binding site. Uh, define binding site. And now you can see that here from current selection is disabled. That's because I have not selected the ligand. I have selecting the current ligand. Then from current selection click here. And now the spear is there. You have to first le left click to select it. Then right click attributes of SBD site spear and just see these are the XYZ coordinates I am again copying this 
see, uh, this is the coordinate. These are the coordinates for my theoretically predicted model. And I'm copying this and I'm pasting it in the same text file below it. Now see that it's in a good agreement between the practically obtained value and the there, there is a good agreement between the practically obtained value and my theoretical value. Of course, you can't get 100% similarity because the uh, structure of N3 and my ligand is much different. But the active site or the site of binding is almost similar. It's very close to each other. And so this is how we validate the docking result based on the practical model. 